afternoon. Welcome to the uh, what is the third annual Procurement Skills Accord Awards. Uh, I'm Nick Ellings, your awards host. In these rather unusual circumstances, I'm the Chief Executive of Energy and Utility Skills, and I'm also part of the Skills Partnership CEO Council that are uh, proud patrons of this fantastic initiative. Now, we're all clearly working virtual today, and as you've just heard from the noise uh, on the microphones coming through, um, we, we need a little bit of housekeeping just to make sure we can all hear each other. So can I ask you please to put yourself on mute uh, and then we're guaranteed we won't have any background noise that distracts everyone. And that bag of sweets that has got them. Yeah, those ones. Thank you. So if you could all make sure you're on mute, please. Um, now, we originally planned to be uh, to be on the banks of the Thames in the sunshine today uh, in Westminster together. Uh, we were due to be hosted by the industrial strategy team of Bayes, uh, Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. But because of the pandemic, for one time only, we hope, we're coming to you live from our front rooms, our broom cupboards and our makeshift um, offices from right across the UK. And it's a warm welcome, uh, not just to the Procurement Skills Accord teams, but we have the uh, Energy and Utilities Skills Partnership Chief Executives on the call, who particularly wanted to be here uh, to make sure you understood they were watching and supportive. We have the Energy and Utility Skills Board on the call for those same reasons, to make sure you understand how important this is. Um, and and our, uh, our congratulations to all the award winners today, but I'll say a little bit more about that and the scheme shortly. A special thanks also to the new chair of the Energy and Utility Skills uh, Partnership, which is Mike Lewis, the CEO of E.ON, and also to Rachel Fletcher, the Chief Executive of Offwap, who are very kindly both here today speaking and presenting the awards. Now, we're actually here today, the point of today is to recognise excellence in procurement practice. So it's for changing company approaches so that they drive targeted skills development and investment right across the supply chain. I welcomed all of the Accord signatories in at the start of the call, and I did mean all, because some of the people on the call today are going to be receiving awards, and some today are not. But for those that are not, I want it to be on the record for praising your efforts and your endeavours, because some of you that are not going to get awards today are having to move heaven and earth internally to persuade your company to take this path. And we know it's not easy. We know that you're doing great work. Uh, and please know that everyone on the call listening in will praise your efforts to change culture and behaviours. And we all hope that next year you too will be in a broom cupboard picking up a hypothetical trophy from people who technically aren't even here. So keep going. And by the way, there are actually real trophies. And as soon as we can get back inside our offices to get them sorted out for you, and as soon as you can get back inside your offices to receive them, they are literally waiting for you. So let's do the quickly the background to the Accord. We launched this back in 2017. It was at the request of the Skills Partnership Chief Executives uh, to help support the supply chain. It was specifically for that reason. It was also to meet a direct challenge from Her Majesty's Treasury to, uh, to drive workforce investment through procurement practices. And you're some of the only private sector people ever to have done that since that challenge was laid out. And for those who've been to previous awards, we've had the Infrastructure and Projects Authority there to make that very point. Much has been achieved during the time. We've had uh, skills now embedded in procurement processes right across companies, but also in the major procurement systems such as the, uh, the Achilles database. We've seen training activity targeted now to close actually acknowledged and specific skills gaps. We've seen apprenticeships in the tier one and the tier two contractors rise by 35% in the tier ones and 42% in the tier twos. And I guess what's important about when you're a part of an accord like this is that over 90% of the people that have taken part in it actually would recommend others take part in it. And I think that's a, an extremely important measure. So what next? Well, the Accord has definitely delivered on its commitments. 
but there's still more to do to make this a sustainable solution. So we're going to hear shortly from Mike Lewis on what the future looks like, and we'll also hear from Rachel Fletcher on the regulator's view. From an energy and utility skills perspective, we confirm our total commitment to this accord, and we did so again this morning when the workforce renewal and skills strategy from the partnership was launched uh, with collaboration right across the chief executives from power, from uh, gas, from water and from the waste management industries. So I think it's time now that you hear from our main speakers. And my first task today is to hand you across to Mike Lewis, the chief exec of E.ON UK and the new chair of the Energy and Utilities Skills Partnership CEO Council. Mike. Thanks, Nick. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted to, to, to be able to give this keynote today and indeed to hand out the awards. And maybe just a, a few words about why I decided to uh, take up the chair of the Energy and Utility Skills Partnership. Um, for me, when I took up the role as CEO of E.ON UK, it was very, very clear that our industry was changing at a rate that uh, certainly unprecedented in, in my uh, career. Now, I joined a 100% coal-fired generator back in the early 90s called PowerGen. And now we are a customer-centric organization looking to deliver zero carbon. And if you believe what the Treasury says, we have to invest anything between 800 a billion and a trillion in delivering zero carbon by 2050. And that implies two things. Number one, obviously a huge investment in infrastructure and physical assets. And number two, a complete reskilling of the workforce to enable us to deliver that investment. Because much of that investment is not traditional utility investment, i.e. big power plants, big centralized generation and so on and so forth. There's a lot more embedded generation, things like heat pumps, things like solar PV and battery, things like hydrogen boilers. So there's a whole renewal of the infrastructure and the skills that go with that that has to come. And that's why, for me, the uh, Energy and Utility Skills Partnership is so critical. I have to say also at the time, um, Dave Newborough, who's, who's on the call today, was our CHRO, and he was passionate about training and driving that agenda throughout E.ON UK. And I must admit, his passion is infectious and I wanted to make sure that I spread the word across our sector. So I think this underpins, this, this passion underpins my commitment to the EUSP and indeed the Procurement Skills Award. And we have to remember why it was developed. It was developed to drive a step change in procurement practices and focus on skills development through the procurement process to ensure that we have a skilled, diverse and indeed sustainable work. And the, the accord itself is a set of five, and I have to say they are challenging commitments, um, which require the signatories to enhance their own workforce resilience, but also just as important to embed skills into procurement processes and provide support for their supply chain in upskilling. And after concluding year three of the PSA, we're now coming to the end of the implementation phase. and. Um, I think there's some really, really big strides we've made in those three years. First of all, we now have 67 participating companies and growing. Secondly, the skills and workforce resilience are increasingly embedded into procurement processes. <coughs> Excuse me. And now uh, Achilles Utilities Vendor Database, the UVDB, procurement is a key component um, to help deliver the changes that our sector needs. And that's a real achievement in only three years um, to have got so many companies participating and having that embedded into the procurement process. And we also have HR and procurement professionals working closely together, collaborating for the first time to ensure that not only their workforce, but also their suppliers are upskilled. We've also significantly increased the amount of training, particularly apprentices over that time period. And in 2018, over 5% of the operational headcount in our sector was on apprenticeships. And that's a tremendous achievement. Bearing in mind the, the age demographic of our uh, industry, it's really important that we bring young people in at the other end and make our industry attractive. And clients and suppliers are also increasingly working together to address skills issues and develop solutions. And the accord is, is really helping to drive this. 
And I think the value of the accord and what it brings to organisations is really starting to be recognised more widely. And I'm delighted to say 46 companies achieved the award this year and well done to those companies um, who did that. And thanks to all of the signatories for their continued support and all of the efforts made over the past three years. With all this in mind, um, we're now looking ahead at how the accord can be delivered to continue the hard work and achievements we've seen to date. And we recognise that there are changes already being made by some, but there's still more work that needs to be done. And in particular, more needs to be done to fully embed the principles of the accord across the whole sector, which is why we're proposing to continue with the same framework believe the required changes to industry can be, be made in the next five years and we're going to be proposing this to the CEO Council which meets after this uh, awards ceremony later today. And to our existing signatories and sector partners, we're asking for your support to continue to follow the principles of the Accord. So we want to make sure it expands and is fully embedded to all of the organisations that have supported it. And uh, from my perspective, I can only repeat um, my own passion for driving the skills agenda. I think it's critically important for our sector. It's critically important if we're to tackle the challenge of climate change and zero carbon, not only to mitigate the impact of climate change, but to adapt to the, uh, the, the, the challenge of climate change. Nick, I hand back to you at that point. Thank you very much indeed, Mike, and thank, thank you for those words, but also for being such an immediate ambassador for the Skills Partnership, because you've really got stuck in right from the start, and we hugely appreciate it. Now, one, one obvious test is the fact that loads more people joined while you were talking than when I was talking, Mike, so we'll take that as a, a fair, fair indication of where this whole uh, this awards is going to go. Um, so for all those people who've joined, who came in after the start, could you just please make sure that you're on mute um, so it, the, the sound doesn't go across the uh, the audio you're going to hear over the, uh, the remaining time of the awards. But thank you very much for being with us. So let me hand you across now to someone else who, who really believes, and I've seen this firsthand, really believes in the power of the workforce and the power of the supply chain in helping our sector to deliver its future successfully for the customers and for the environment. If I'll hand you across now to the Chief Executive of Offwatt, to Rachel Fletcher, and lovely to have you with us, Rachel. Thanks. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, well, it really is a huge honour to be invited to present the Procurement Skills Accord Awards today. And I think these awards, um, part, partly what I love about these awards is that they're celebrating the vital role that the supply chain plays in keeping the lights on, keeping the boilers burning, the taps uh, running and the toilets flushing all across Britain. And the awards recognise that our essential services depend crucially on uh, utility uh, companies working hand in hand with contractors uh, from tiny family owned businesses all the way through to big multinational uh, companies. And, it, and it's actually great to see the supply chain in all its diversity uh, represented uh, so well today. Uh, but of course, um, these awards also shine a, a much needed spotlight on the importance of skills and workforce investment in the utility sector. Uh, now, as a regulator, we place an emphasis on resilience and we expect companies to be able to cope with short term shocks like COVID-19 or the dry weather that we've seen recently but also to be able to rise to long-term challenges like climate change and the net zero challenge that Mike's just been talking about. So a resilient sector needs a deep pool of the right skills uh, to pull on now and a talent pipeline for decades to come. Um, and skills development across the supply chain is absolutely vital for a resilient industry and investing in these skills, I believe, um, is crucial if customers are to get a great service today um, and in future generations to come. Now, I think that investing in skills is not just good for the, the sector and not just good for customers. It also benefits um, the individual employee. 
and training and apprenticeships help us all to achieve our own potential uh, and brings personal fulfillment. And I think it's really interesting to see the research that shows that if people are learning and growing at work, they're more likely to give to the workplace, uh, creating a virtuous cycle and indeed helping um, the energy and the water industries rise to some of the challenges that they're currently facing. I also passionately believe that the utility sector is a fabulous place to work um, if you want to create a better world. And it's great to see um, through the accord so much attention being brought to bringing uh, new people in through apprenticeships and giving them the skills that they need uh, to thrive and contribute to the work. And finally, a focus on skills, I believe, is great for society. We know that the water and the energy sectors can and do provide local employment and a source of investment and economic growth, um, even in parts of the country that might otherwise be overlooked. So I don't think it's an exaggeration, actually, to say uh, that a focus on skills in the utility sector uh, can contribute, especially at this time, to rebuilding Britain and making a more prosperous and equal society, which I know um, is something that many of us are committed to. So in conclusion, I think the skill, the skills agenda, it's good for the industry, it's good for customers, but it also brings benefit to individuals and in society. So I really um, commend and thank EU skills and um, their supporters for launching the Procurement Skills Accord um, and delivering real achievements through it to date. Um, and a massive congratulations from me as well uh, to all 46 award winners. Thank you, Nick, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Rachel. And uh, thanks for the words. Um, but the I know everyone on the call will really appreciate you being here. To, to do this virtual presentation, but we're also very grateful too for the support you've given around this morning's skills strategy launch and getting that away and supporting quotes and so on. So thank you for that. So let's let's move quickly into the awards themselves. I'm aware that all awards ceremonies, people are drinking heavily at this point um, and you're all looking to go to a nightclub somewhere that opens quite early. So um, what we're going to try to do virtually, and we've never tried this before, is to uh, give it a go to try and present these awards in batches of five. So uh, they'll be presented in groups of five with Mike and Rachel taking turns to do that. So let me hand you back across to Mike to start us off with the first awards. Thanks, Nick. And uh, as Nick said, we'd normally be um, standing on a stage of some kind and inviting people up to collect the award. Nonetheless, I think um, we're going to do this uh, equally uh, well uh, virtually. So I I'd like to present the award uh, virtually for the first five uh, winners, which is Avidity, Babcock International, BAM Nuttall, Ludden Construction, and last but not least, uh, <laughs> Eon. I don't know if I'm allowed to give an award to myself, Nick, but, uh, but I am. You definitely up, uh, are. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to all those companies uh, for their achievement, which is fantastic. Rachel. OK, well, I'm, I'm, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm quite glad I'm not squeezed into an evening dress that I've probably grown out of. Um, and I'm really pleased uh, to present awards to Alpha Construction, Amy Utilities, Andrew Hughes Utility Services, Varhel and Kay Sillian. Thank you very much, Rachel. And if there's any consolation, I'm sat here in a full suit and slippers. Let me hand yeah. you back to Mike. Yes, I, I should say Nick did say we should should dress up. So I'm wearing a tie for the first time in many months, I have to tell you, but at least uh, uh, he didn't make us wear the full black tie. Um, so uh, I'm delighted now to move on to the, the next batch of winners. And if I might present MA Utilities, National Grid, Northern Gas Networks, Northern Power Grid and Amexon. Thank you very much, Mike. And for all the winners, please accept there's virtual clapping on going on all around you at the moment. Let me hand you to Rachel. Yeah, some virtual clapping and some virtual glass chinking. chinking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very happy to present 
the awards to CMW Utilities, Dunphy Combustion, Eric's Industrial Services, Installcom and Lane's Group. Many congratulations. Congratulations all and thank you. Let me hand back to Mike. Thank you, Nick. And I'd like to invite the following companies onto the virtual stage to receive their awards. PN Daily, Prosimium Group, RJ McLeod, Rockmount Utilities and Scottish Power. And I think any award ceremony would be thrilled if they could get this much done in such short time. So I hope we've got <laughs> short, short changing anyone who's receiving these awards, but we have a lot to do. So let me hand you back on to Rachel. Yeah, maybe you're setting a new norm here, Nick. You need to be careful. <laughs> so the, the awards that I'm very pleased to present now are to Keir, Morgan Sindel, MWH Treatment, Network Plus, and NMCN. Lovely. Thank you very much, Rachel. And Mike, back to you. Thank you, Nick. And the next batch of winners I'm delighted to present to are Southern and Redfern Industrial Services, Siemens, SSE, UK Power Networks, and VGC Labour Solutions. Congratulations to all of that. Lovely. That's fantastic. And Rachel, we're asking you in the last one now uh, to do to do more than your, your uh, required five. So we'll uh, so we'll obviously have the check in the post for giving you the extra one on that part. But let me hand to you for the final awards. Very happy, uh, especially if there's an incentive payment here for me. <laughs> uh, the awards go uh, to Northumbrian Water, to Pennon Group, RBS Scaffolding, Scottish Water, Skanska and Thames Water. That's fantastic. Congratulations to everyone who's won those awards and as we said earlier on congratulations to everyone who's taken the trouble and the time to go through this process to try and drive skills investment up so i'm going to hand back to mike now just to say a little bit more about some of the awards and uh, to give a special well done to a couple of companies mike yeah thanks nick and and i think um you know when i look at the the range of names and and the firepower in that list of winners it, it is quite remarkable we have uh, some household names there, some of the biggest and best companies in the UK. And I think it, it's testimony to the uh, success of, of the, the scheme that we've managed to get such a, a prestigious group of companies together and succeeding. But there are um, five companies on a, a, an even more exclusive list. Um, they scored an outstanding 100% from their audit by demonstrating excellent uh, compliance and clear evidence of sustaining a skilled workforce, embedding skills into the uh, procurement process and supporting the supply chain in identifying and resolving skills issues. So a special well done and a special thank you to those companies that achieved 100%, namely Anglian Water, Balfour BT, Balmoral Tanks, David Carr Durham Limited and O'Connor Utilities. Congratulations. Nick. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mike. So warm congratulations to all. And uh, because they'll be picking up me, uh, picking me up on this later on Scottish Water. Yes, I know you're not a privatised utility. Yes, I know you're government owned. So my heartfelt apologies for that comment earlier. Uh, that doesn't apply to you in terms of the HM Treasury comment. Um, I think uh, essentially that brings our award ceremony to a close. I know you'll want to get off now to the virtual casino and go and have those photos taken with colleagues that you'll all regret for the next six months. Um, but my, my special thanks for the whole audience for taking the trouble to join us, because as you, you'll, uh, for, for those of you who've seen the meeting chat on the side, you have a whole series of the Chief Execs Council, my board are, are with this as well, a whole series of guests. It really does matter what you're doing. And Rachel said this earlier on, you are making a difference. And it's really important that your companies understand the energy and the commitment you've put in. And hopefully these awards go some way to, uh, to expressing just how much uh, people are proud of what you've done. So my thanks to the guest speakers, to Mike and to Rachel, really appreciate you doing this. Mike is part of an exhausting schedule. We have you on for the rest of the day uh, as the chair, but uh, greatly appreciated. To all the Accord signatories and the award winners, thank you very much for a whole year of endeavour. 
And I also wanted to do a special thank you to the energy and utility skills team in the background who've done all the administration to turn a physical ceremony into what you're witnessing today and make everything work. So my heartfelt thanks to them. So I'd like to formally close today's ceremony by uh, doing two things. The first is if you're a member of the, uh, the Energy and Utilities Skills Partnership CEO Council, you've got another meeting from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's not on this webinar connection. So when we've finished, it's a dial off, have a break, and we'll see you at two o'clock on the second, the separate connection web link we've sent you. Any problems, let us know. But for everybody else who's joined in this awards, thank you heartfelt for being here. And I want to sign off with this final slide which then it goes on to include just some of the comments and the video clips explaining how the people who've won the awards feel about taking part in the Procurement Skills Accord Awards. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your patience. And please stay safe and have a good day. Thank you, Steve. Hi, it's Robin from Alpha here. Massive thanks to all Alpha this year for the hard work. Uh, in achieving the award for the third year running. Uh, thanks to the skill team for their continued support and hard work and of course presenting us with this today. Um, finally, well done to everyone else who's also achieved the award this year. Cheers. Hi, it's Dave West from Amy. Absolutely delighted that we've again achieved the award for the Procurement and Skills Accord. And I want to thank everyone from Amy that was involved. Cheers. Thank you. We're thrilled at Lanes Group to achieve the Procurement Skills Accord Award again. on Health and Safety and Trading Manager for PN Daily. We are very proud and grateful to receive the Procurement Skills Accord Award 2019. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a few words we need to say that for us, uh, attaining the, the Skills Accord is an excellent achievement. The, uh, and it also perfectly recognises Pennon's commitment to training and development. So, yeah, very well received. So thank you to you, Skills. Um, also, a big thank you to the team, particularly to Jill and Bex, that were the people that really made it happen for us. So thank you. <laughs>